Flimsy Windows Creative Julian Phillips with Tom Luong Sept 16, 2018 The Cobalt Migration Chapter 13 This is the 160-year story of a unique family, recruited over four generations beyond the atomic bomb at World War II's Hiroshima, Japan, to learn the needed skills and readiness to be among Earth's very first settlers on the planet Mars, Jupiter's moons, and other local solar system worlds and moons. From the story by co-author Tom Luong. Cobalt, cobalt, indigo, indigo is deep, blue, is blue. The rejected, the rejected one, one, the dark, the dark one, the forbidden one. If I am, if I am cobalt, then we are cobalt. It is cobalt when it's blue. Please enjoy this weekly series, or visit the website on YouTube, for the entire story, more than three hours so far. Chapter 13 Charles Lincoln, the son of Air Force legend Phil S. Corso, and cunningly beautiful Japanese flower seller Melutenica, was quite certain for a moment, that something went wrong, about ten minutes before launch. The Proteus's sold orbital attainment rocket was within only a few long and ponderous launch series commands, before the vessel would lift into the airy sky above the Puerto Rico spaceport. To do so would be the start of a more or less routine mission to resupply a base on the moon. Pre-flight tensions and nerve-wracking what-if potentials for disaster are normal enough for any pilot, be it a small fixed-wing airplane or a jet fighter or a ship to the moon. Charles would command this mission, along with crew members USSF Major Koita, Sergeant Ron Davidson as cargo handler, co-pilot Lieutenant Kevin Scott. Medical doctor and pilot was left behind, but would be replaced by Major Thomas Long. The same pilot Charles had worked with in Hong Kong, many years before. Then, but Major Charles Lincoln Corso, USSF pilot and space program Jack Killer Team Associate, under the Pentagon's Commander Anderson, he knew something was not right. What is it? Charles knew the journey to the moon was mostly a routine navigation. But the launch sequence was a very demanding hour for any pilot into space. And he was Even not responsible for the process. There was no button for him to push to start, or God forbid start launch process. But he sensed very sharply that something was telling him that something else was telling him that something about the next ten minutes would not function as intended by its manufacturer. He tapped his helmet communicator. Major Todd. Do we have a cargo seal problem on box 4? Look at this blinker. Here. Ta bent forward. Either of them could listen in on the launch sequence control transmission. The Puerto Rico spaceport control was a global supported program, and every detail of their mission was under their authority. The minutes passed. <laughs> Ready at 5 minutes, 55 seconds, control jack team launch one. Thank you. That's a crate of something in four, Corso. Ta said, interpreting the small red blinker on the control array where they were piloting the Proteus the Silver from. It was just long enough to be comfortable even in survival mode. Once in orbit. The vessel would resolve in stages to a military spacecraft reverse engineered from the far more Design. sophisticated probably provided by the unwelcome alien valve alien Thor, and then take them to the moon. But not if there was even a teensy weensy problem with the launch. Something's wrong or that monitor light is off, that shows the cargo seal is possibly loose. We'll all die in the vacuum with no air and never even know what happened. Abort the launch to inspect. Do it? Major Paul looked at his commanding officer.
officer. The worst. The absolute worst. Launch control. Launch control please respond. This is Command Pilot Assault a Proteus Major Taco Pilot. We need to cancel and abort the lift. We have an urgent red light up. Here on cargo 4. Please copy me. Code 91. Please launch command. Abort launch immediately. Do you copy? The other radio chatter slowed and then seemed to lull like sleeping bees in a glass jar. Tom Corso knew some of the launch control team, but not all. We got your message, a sold a pilot. Hold please. The background monitoring launch sequence audio roll continued an instant longer. Now ready of four minutes down exactly. Ready to open fuel gates to mains. At your order, sir. Go ahead when ready. Hold please. The other launch monitor answered. Then, your commander Corso, sir. Is that right? Static. Shut down the launch now control or we're all going to die. Cargo 4 has potential seal problem. I'm calling an abort to review. No on the fueling gates. Do you hear me? That's an order. More static. Radio chatter on the launch multiset. At least 40 launch and space command officers and civilian specialists were listening in. A long moment. All right. This is your launch command. We are aborting. Repeat. Launch abort at 3 minutes and 17 seconds. Repeat. Repeat to all. Stations. Launch is aborted. Cargo leak problem. Copy and confirm, please. Urgent. An alarm started to sound loudly throughout the entire radio set for the launch. They could hear the message clearly enough. If the fueling had started, they would have had a huge mess. It could have been a major disaster. Confirming from Proteus command set, to launch. Lift aborted. No good on fuel gates. Launch is aborted. Thank you Mr. Governor. The system alarm went on and on as the tech crew started to shut down systems. It was a bot. And there was always the temptation to just go ahead, rather than spend the laborious time and effort to stop the launch and start all over again. A very tedious process even when everything was perfect. But stop they did. An intelligent person can stop doing something. Charles Lincoln. What the fuck? Cargo 4 was fine. I checked it myself. Then why does my reader tell me we have a potential? You know that's more than enough if it's true. Corsa took his hands to his head and removed the lock on helmet with a sharp twist, then lifting it away to expose his face and head to the command cabin air on the Isolde. Damn it anyway. Better to look. That's for sure. What the heck is in those crates? Sugar. Sugar? Sugar. Oh yes it is very long with coffee. The Hispanic immigrant a very big lungs and a very big heart, the biggest, so it's a very long worker in space programs and spaceship store. More sugar, more sugar.
It's hard to get up there. Cargo for seal monitor still shows blinker green red so you're right. It must have slipped at loading. How did you? No? I was ready for the ride upstairs, man. How did you know? I could smell it, Todd. The alarm went on and on. Good job, Flyboy Jack Dean. You guys are the best. There was laughter on the line from other stations, and also other messages. Fuel gate stop start. Tracking down. Life sustained down. It took hours, and during that time the idea launch window would shift ever so slightly while the earth turned against the firmament above. If more than 12 hours were needed to check the cargo seal, they might not even leave the earth for days. Very funny, Mon Capitan. Muy bueno. Davidson chimed in on the wire. More laughter and mockery, as they all started over together. That's your alien blood mother talking, Commander. What planet are you from? More laughter. General Anderson is at his quarters in the orbiting station above the moon base. Far ahead of his sleeping dream under the heavy trance channel created by Anthony Smith, to project him this same identical future, a phone rings and he picks up. It's Val, the one called Stranger, on the other end. Anderson greets Thor accordingly and was expecting his call. You always seem to know the best time to call me Thor says the general. It's all in the mind general says. I am more compact than human beings, you ought to know that be not James. They continue to exchange inter-world cliches, a few moments longer. Most of the humor the alien understood was about the resident of an Illinois town named after the planet Uranus which in the Earth's planet system was a cold, lifeless barren world. Then they got into the real business of the call. The USSF conspiracy was unspoken. This was because there was no contact whatsoever with an off-world immigrant like Thor, except that it was highly suspect as a fraud, or a movement by a great power, needing attention in either case but fearfully and lacking almost entirely for real communication review. Val expressed his interest in making sure that it was only the son of Melutonica and Philip Corso, that is, Major Charles Lincoln Corso, the mission commander on the flight that had just been cancelled due to a cargo hold leak, who was the centre of their conversation. The Pentagon career officer coughed ruefully and huffed, as if he had swallowed a mint candy. Without a smile or a laugh, Anderson also realized that the alien Thor's superior intelligence was working on the center of the hidden space operations. It wasn't that he feared collusion with the monster. It was to somehow find a way out of a frightening future for his friends and teams. All nations participating in this operation, and the USA, and all other nations, must never know of my presence on Urantia, General Anderson. I insist. This must never change. Known to be fluent in 100 different languages, Valvalian Thor, assumed to be a Raelian being because of the great distances to other stars, the creature could speak to and understand just about anyone on the planet, and in 196 countries in the Earth world today. This single fact created a tremendous problem for almost anyone he spoke to, and he chose who he spoke with very carefully, 
a far superior player of games, the same pawns of happiness and hearts to the dogs. Charlie Lincoln will be piloting all four missions in the near future. Val told Anderson, directing him as a superior officer would command a subordinate. His voice was more like a sheet of invisible ice filling the mind with meaning, but not with a cause. What the general would never know was that Val Valiant Thor was himself at least 400 years old, and had personally performed the process of artificially bringing together the hybrid alien-human zygotes in the mid-40s, that gave birth to the physical organic life of Melutanica, the Japanese flower seller. I understand you are tracking the progress made by Corso in the missions and will be expecting progress reports on special activities that Corso will display during those missions. And of course, Corso will be accompanied by the highly educated and experienced crew in the missions. I myself hand-picked the crew of the Jack Killer, Thor, the MD, and Koi, Davidson, Scott, Officer May on ground control, the others. So you must comprehend when I speak to you, Thor, and whoever you communicate with at whatever level, with the full weight of my position at the USSF, these people come first with me. Not some grandiose design of your epic dream of godhood or whatever. My people come first. Enlighten me, then, human being. Why does he not show telepathic skills and a favor to the deep space life? Charles Lincoln is my Caitlin Cashin, we are the same. Well, for God's sake. Valiant, how can I answer that, you freak? What if the moon resupply mission fails? Or the Venus exploration mission, the highly dubious if not totally insane Mars Sentry recovery mission, or the Jupiter exploration mission? Those objectives will take a long, long time. Charles may not survive even the first attempt. In due time my friend. friend. Val hangs up the phone, leaving the general pondering a few seconds. The general hangs up his phone. He opens up the sealed transparent window shutters at the place where he was at the orbiting space station above the Earth's moon. He was already there, along with the population of the base itself and other small ships and rescue vessels. The stars making up the local galaxy, the Milky Way looked back at him. He smirked knowingly thinking it all over. That damn creature Val is too powerful. But the idea slipped away, there was nothing to be done. The space soldier enjoyed the view for a few moments, as Val Vala in Thor's information to Crude and his thoughts. In due time my friend. In due time my friend. In due time my friend. This person's phone is switched off. Please try later or send a text.